Hey guys, Mechanic CG here, and welcome back to another episode of Forza Motorsport 3. Today is episode number 98. If you want to help support the channel, then leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe, and feel free to check out the other videos in the Forza Mega Series. Now let's get into the content. This video was streamed live on Twitch. Come watch us live with the link in the description. If you want to get cheap game keys for Xbox, PlayStation, or PC, then check out Eniba in the description down below. No, I, I, I can't stop. What a tune. Fucking love it. Six hundred horsepower and rear tires is too little. I do agree with that. Too little. I thought I meant too much. I thought I said anything above 600 horsepower should be four wheel drive. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Hennessy is American, so they just add more power and don't think about things. So Hennessy just out the window. Same with um, anything American, really. They'll just put more power in it. Americans do, when they look at things and look at problems, they just think, put more of it in. Whatever it is. You want a faster car, put more power in it. They got 600 horsepower from a three-cylinder engine, Pandy. The Jamera, the four-seater one, has a 600 horsepower engine, twinned with like a 1,000 horsepower electric motor. Yeah, 600 horsepower. It's got more than that. <laughs> that's that's why I don't understand. It's 1,700 overall. Yeah, so it's 600. Electric and then 1,100. Wait, no. 1,100 electric, 600 petrol. Which seems backwards because you would expect it to have more petrol power. But then again, it is only three cylinders, so. I still think it's crazy. You can get 600 horsepower out of three cylinders. I want the Jumeirah to be featured in more games. But games see it, oh, it's a four-seater, so it's a family car. No one wants that. I want a fucking Jumeirah. The system runs you down, big city life. Didn't Rimac make an 1800 horsepower electric car, right? It was 1800 horsepower. The Nevera. Which was basically the Rimac concept too, but the um, production version. They got it to 258. Fucking hell. Is there like a YouTube video of it? Because I want to watch it. Yeah, well, they had the concept one, which got sent over a fucking. <laughs> it got crashed out. They then made the Concept 2, which was basically the pre-production version of the Nevera. So, really, when you think of it, the Nevera is just their first production car. And the Concepts were just the Nevera before... thingy. It was uploaded yesterday. Fucking hell. Could you send it to me on Discord? I need to have a look at that. But, um, what was I going to say? Yeah, Rimac. I'm very excited for Bugatti Rimac. As much as I'm going to be gutted that there won't be a W16 engine anymore. If Rimac can put, like, a powerful V6 into a car, along with their electric motors, we could quite easily see a 2,000 horsepower Bugatti. Easily. It's not going to be electric, it's going to be hybrid. 
It's been... Uh, I, th I think the Rimac boss already said that they were going hybrid. Um, because, obviously, I, I'm not sure whether Rimac owns Bugatti or whether Bugatti owns Rimac, but it is the Rimac boss that bosses both companies now. I'm pretty sure. But he said that Rimac will continue to do electric only, while Bugatti will n move to hybrid. So they'll have uh, electric motors and petrol engine. <laughs> nice one, Cardo. I still haven't installed the update yet. Um, my internet wasn't liking doing it at the same time, so once I finish this, I'll run the update and then we can carry on from there. Because he, um, what was it? Nico Rosberg did a video when he was picking up his car. It was like the first one. And you got shaders and stuff to install. Oh yeah, I forgot the fucking shaders. Why isn't that done through Steam then? Why are they doing it through their own thing? Because Steam has pre-shader caching and stuff like that. So I don't understand why... They're not just doing it as part of the installs with Steam. Seems backwards. Anyways. <laughs> I've just died in a Sesto Elemento. Let's... Uh, shit, I've just dry died in a McLaren P1. Let's go drive a Sesto. Such a great idea. Yeah, I know they did it in Warzone 1. But they did it in Warzone 1 because they weren't on Steam. <laughs> That's why I thought when they move over to Steam, they'd rely on Steam. You know. It just seems a bit backwards. To do stuff that someone else can do for you and makes it easier on everyone else. But, you know. It's Microsoft and Activision. They don't think about their consumers. Steam is literally the only company I think that I actually like in the gaming industry now. Like, Ubisoft is a bitch. Like, screw you, Ubisoft. Xbox is just buying up all these studios, which... Some of it's good. But it's just causing so much shit in the gaming industry. PlayStation are just sitting on their ass doing fuck all. They're not buying up studios back. Um, and I just can't be asked with PlayStation anymore. Like, it's, it's a bit, like, consoles just in general. But PlayStation is like, oh, that's not fair. Meanwhile, sits on their ass. Um... Bethesda were apparently a bunch of twats to Mick Gordon over the making of Doom Eternal, so screw them. It's just a very weird time for the gaming industry. My neck kills. Out of the king. Bim, bim.
<laughs> Alright, not bad. Hail to the king. Kneel to the grave. Nice. Do 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 do. All right, there we go. Race over. Ta-da! Oh my god, I'm shattered. I can do with an hour of sleep. Right, chat. Chat. Shit has changed. Shit has changed. So, um, probably a video or two ago, which would have been on the same stream, mind you, uh, I had obviously mentioned how, in fact, no, it wasn't that long ago. It might have been the last race, actually. Was it the last race? I don't know, I mentioned something about gaming. I think I did it at the start of the stream, but I also did it in the last race as well. Id Software not responding to um, Mick Gordon. They've just put a response out, like, literally while I was doing the last race. <laughs> put a response out on Twitter, right? And they've basically just said, it's all bullshit. Which I find in incredibly funny, because the entire of Mick's account um, pretty much proved with photographic evidence of some of these things, so, I don't know. Get a feeling that I never, 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 never had before, no, no, I get a good feeling. It is very interesting to see how, um, I'm obviously curious to see what id Software like, does. Whether they get to the bottom of this and get that Doom Eternal OST sorted out.
But by the looks of it, there have been some major cock-ups at Bethesda. Major cock-ups that need fixing ASAP. Because pretty much about three quarters of Mick Gordon's statement was all backed up by some form of evidence. Um, so it's, it's, I mean, I'm believing majority of it because it does seem something that a big corporation does. Um, I'm not really believing Bethesda, especially as the fact that they went to a platform like Reddit, a platform that's known for instantly blaming people for stuff. Um, like, Reddit and Twitter are the two platforms that you don't make a public announcement on because so many people will just absolutely shit post on them. Absolutely shit post on them. So for... Um, an ID executive to go and put a post out on Reddit, wrong place to do it. So by all means, whether it's true or not, was the wrong place to do it. Twitter would also be the wrong place to do it as well, but hey, no, you don't put a post out like that. And with the amount of blame being put on Mick Gordon saying that he I mean, the majority of the problem was the fact over Bethesda basically blaming Mick Gordon for not getting the OST done on time. But then Mick Gordon's come out and said, hang on, this isn't right. I hadn't actually been contracted, for, contracted to do it until pretty much the day the game released. Even though they had announced it was coming out announced that it had been delayed. So it, it seems a bit odd. I think I'm on Team Mick. I think a lot of people are on Team Mick because... I mean, there's photographic evidence that fits. Emails and shit like that. But at the same time, Bethesda has... had a week to put out a statement to say, hang on, we have this evidence that disproves it, but all they've done is just said, hey, he's, not, he's telling porkies! And shit like that, so... I don't know. It just seems fucking stupid, this whole situation. Again, I really, I really do believe that Bethesda's in the wrong with this one. Specifically, the guy, the guy in charge of id software not bethesda because bethesda obviously owns studios Never gonna give you up, never gonna let you down. But yeah, it's, it's, it's a very weird situation. And I really hope it gets sorted out. Um, I mean, Mick Gordon... <laughs> Bethesda doesn't do glitches and errors, they do extra features. <laughs> I mean, again, it's not really Bethesda because ID Software is a sub-studio that's run by, even though it's owned by Bethesda, it's like if Codemasters did something wrong, we wouldn't straight up go and say EA is the developer, it's all their fault. You'd say Codemasters. It's sort of similar with this. I don't think Bethesda's are at fault. I don't think... They obviously mentioned that apparently um, one of the guys that worked there, Chad, who worked on the OST 
for the collector's edition because obviously Mick didn't do it in quotations, even though he hadn't been offered. Obviously, Chad's getting hate. Chad doesn't deserve the hate. He had, did nothing wrong, so... He's done some work and it's not been up to the standard that people like, so that doesn't warrant him getting shat on. That's down to the people who hire him, more than anything. But to be fair, this is a fairly Bethesda thing to do to absolutely mess it up. I mean, if you go back to 2018, when Bethesda did the collector's edition of Fallout 76, and it took them a year to send out canvas bags, because obviously th they basically had the whole canvas bag fiasco four years ago. Basically, if you got the collector's edition, you got, like, a collector helmet for Fallout 76. Um, and you could obviously get that helmet. And it came in a canvas bag. Well, that's what they advertised. But what actually got sent out was basically a cheap Tesco's plastic bag. It wasn't anything fancy. Like, Tesco's plastic bags were higher quality than what they sent out, to be perfectly honest. I'm giving Tesco credit here. Tesco, pay me. Uh, no, but... Um... What's it called? It took a month to actually, like, make canvas bags to send out to people. And it was just absolutely ridiculous. And I think it's a similar situation with the music for Doom Eternal. They've just had an absolute shit show with it. I think, though, we're going to see a lot of um, gaming news outlets are going to... Uh, what's it called? Pick up on it now that Bethesda's responded. Because I think some of them just haven't discussed any of it because it has just been a he said, she said. But now that Bethesda said something, people are going to be like, wow, Bethesda's gotten involved. It's not just two blokes fighting, it's a whole company. Let's get in on this shit. So I'm actually kind of curious to see what other like creators are going to make out of it. Definitely doesn't look good for uh, Bethesda at all. We got the fire. <laughs> very good, very nice, very good, very nice. Hello, sexy banana. Right, not bad. Vodafone. Yeah, it, a set of courses time model is actually crazy. Sorry, Zeno, I've only just seen that message. Um, yeah, id software is fucked. <laughs> That's the only word I've got for them. They're fucked. They've been absolutely rinsed because they haven't shown any proof. Absolutely fucking rinsed. So I'm right, to be honest. Like... A little left behind. I 
I do find it kind of amusing that Bethesda will obviously. I understand why Bethesda's back in, like, Marty and all that. Their corner. But Jesus Christ, they didn't even, like... Show any evidence to back their side. They just went, no, he's lying. There's literally the whole thing out of that statement. The only thing they said is, this is all lies. But didn't back it. Yep. To be fair, can't even say that was my bad driving because th who of the other AI also went off at the same time? You're not doing photo mode? No, because I'm still doing the final race. Come on, get out of the way. Fuck you. Fuck you. Get out of the way, pricks. All right. Yeah, this is the last race of the stream. And then I'm getting dinner. I said about 10. Not exactly at 10. I need to still do stuff. Afterwards. Yep. Are you playing keyboard? No, I'm on the controller. Why would I be playing keyboard? I'm playing off of an Xbox 360. I didn't support keyboards. Oh, on we Warzone. Well, why don't you say, are you playing keyboard on Warzone? Can't say, are you playing keyboard whilst I'm playing Forza? <laughs> yes, I'll be playing keyboard on Warzone because it is better. Hands down is better. Shit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ah, what? Apparently me going around the final bit of that corner was going off track. The, the exclamation mark popped up while I was on the track. Stupid. Everything you'll ever feel is good again. Does Road America actually have like a shortened version of it? I can't remember. It does. It has a little cut out there. You can actually do two halves on it. The top half and the bottom half. Cool. It's kind of weird, because in all of the Forza games so far, obviously Motorsport 1, 2, and 3 have all had Road America, but they don't have the shortened down version. 
which is kind of interesting. Oh, I just realised I've still got another gear. I've got another two gears. Road America tracks have been included in many racing video games. The track is only permanent road circuit. It does have short short layouts. It does have short layouts. Might not anymore, but in it does have short layouts. Because there's clearly a route there, off the track, for a short short route. Yeah, I suppose. This is an old track. Hey, nice one. Why have you got a new one coming in? You got like a new bank account or something. Because I've, I've never had a new one come in. Because every time I've always lost it before the new one's supposed to come. So I end up just ordering it. Yeah, I've never had one that expires and then had a new one turn up. I've always just, ah, I've lost it. Gotta get a new card. I've never had a card expire. And I've had bank cards, I've, I think I've had my current account for about six, seven years now. So... Do you know what's really weird, right? Bank numbers... They aren't all new. Like, when you get your new card, you'll realise that they swap... I think they swap four numbers. That's it. And normally it goes within a pattern based off of the last one. So normally they'll, like, increase one number or decrease another number. It's fucking stupid. Like, it is totally predictable to work out what your next bank number is going to be. Like, my one, I kid you not, I kid you not, right? I, I literally made a purchase off of my new bank card before it turned up. Like, before it came in the mail, predicting what my new bank number was. And actually fucking did a put because it's stupid the way that they do it. And cause some sites don't actually require the security code on the back. Sites like Amazon, for example, don't actually require the security code on the back for you to add a bank card. So you can just add a bank card if you know the front like the expiry date and all that. It's just strange. It's weird. It's so, like, 
I'm surprised Amazon hasn't gotten in trouble for that. With, like, banks and shit. Like, oh, look, we got a website where you can take pictures of anyone's bank card just straight off the front. Don't even need to look at the back. Get a picture of the front, you can buy stuff off Amazon, no problem. Like, it seems like a really weird thing to do. Mm -hmm. Like any other guy. Honestly, I hate bank. Banking in general. Like, some of the banks are just fucking stupid. So, thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe. And I will see you in the next one. Peace out. <laughs>